Um, so, as I was like, how's it going? <clears throat> mm. Hi guys, Jello, let's start. I got that uh, message, uh, economics. How many people have economics? So only one student has chemistry and eco vote. Yeah. All right, Jello, let's continue. So one thing I didn't mention in 11A is uh, we talked about indicators, right? In sufficient detail, as much detail as it's required. But I didn't talk about this. There's a thing called litmus paper, and uh, that's supposed to help you identify an acid or a base slash alkali. It could be a base or I think alkali is a better word. So let's not write anything here right now. Okay. So litmus paper is just a small sticker sort of thing, you know, like those note uh, stickers you get for uh, marking your, in your registers, like as a bookmark, like those sticky things, you can write a little note on it. They're like the really thin ones. That's what litmus paper is like. And you take it, you take a sample of acid and you drop it on the litmus paper. And what happens is it turns blue litmus paper red, right? So litmus paper has some coating on it. I don't know what exactly that coating is, but it changes color when it's in the presence of an acid or in the presence of a base. So if you have a blue litmus paper, it'll turn red, uh, which is kind of confusing because I think the litmus paper starts by, uh, I, I think it's just yellow, like I've seen it, it's yellow, but how the exam or like how people generally say it it's just, it turn, it'll turn blue litmus paper red, whereas in the presence of an alkali, it'll turn red litmus paper blue. So why exactly do they do that? Or why can't they just say litmus paper will turn red? No, you can't say that. You have to say blue litmus paper will turn red in the presence of an acid. Okay. And the other way is true as well. Red litmus paper will turn blue. So you have to highlight these things. Blue will turn red and red will turn blue. Again, and they're just identifications of different acids or an alkali if you have one. So you can tell in the test tube if you have an acid or an alkali, but not how strong it is. No indication, there will be no indication if it's ultra strong or just ever so slightly acidic. Nimu pani bhi ho sakta or, you know, it could be the worst acid in the world. Okay. Is that clear so far for 11A kids? I think I so far only see Aisha from 11A. Ayla is here, welcome Ayla. But I don't see many people. Oh well. TK. All right.
Okay. Any questions so far? Who enters? No, sir. Welcome, Hayden. I was Soha earlier here, or did she just come? Hi, Soha. I'm feeling great, right, Hayden. Hmm. All right. My MacBook is heating up. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So we talked about a few assets. Let me. Copy this. All right, we'll ignore this bit for now, the conductivity, but the general pH, right, for certain acids. So you can tell hydrochloric acid sulfuric acid and nitric acid are generally strong acids. And other acids, especially organic acids, are weak acids. Now, what do I mean by organic acids is methanoic acid is an organic acid. And just by the name, because methane, right? And methanoic. I think it's just CH, what is it? It's C, I think it's just CHOOH. I have to draw the diagram for it to recall. Yeah, this is methane, methanoic acid. So this is methanoic acid. You have ethanoic acid after that. And citric acid, don't really need to know. I don't even know what it is. But citric acid, normally found in lemons. Okay. And the pH is generally lower. Okay. And I think that's a Normally you don't see it at around two. Normally you call it a weak acid, I think three or higher, right? The pH has to be three or higher for it to be in a weak acid. But you know, whatever, anything can count. Okay. Now, one thing is also present is that they're fixing the concentration. Okay, so higher the concentration is also one thing, the stronger that acid is, right? Let me try explaining that better, what exactly I mean. Now, a strong acid can act as a, well, can, can be very dilute and not burn your hand. A strong acid can do that. How so? It can just be very dilute. Let's compare a strong acid strong acid and a weak acid. Okay. Now the reason this is a strong acid is because it ionizes completely. The amount of acid you have, all of it turns into H plus ions and whatever is attached to the H plus ions. For a weak acid, it ionizes partially about three to 7%. We saw that in the last class, right? Ionizes partially. Okay. Now you can have the same acid, right? But this kind of definition stays, you know, it's a strong acid or a weak acid, depending on how much H plus ions it produces. And uh, this definition kind of, you know, keeps one thing constant, is that concentration is kind of constant. Okay, we're not really, you know, it's up by constant, I mean, we're not really debating if the concentration is changing or not. But you can have the same acid, a strong acid in a solution where uh, you have just a very tiny amount of that acid to the point where it's negligible and you can, you know, 
throw it around or whatever, and it won't do any, anything because there's barely any acid there. It'll barely do anything. So even though it's a strong acid, it can't act as a strong acid because there's just not enough of it present. TK, is that clear to people what I'm trying to say? Someone's, hey, I think I was up. Howdy. I'm good, sir, how are you? I'm doing all right. TK, but everyone else, uh, does this make sense? Um, Ashwin, what do you think? Soha? It's kind of like, yeah. Can you guys hear noise from the background on my end? Yeah, all right. I have to turn around and shout. Okay, strong acid will uh, be still be a strong acid, but it can, you know, not be too corrosive. So if I have like a test tube with like very dilute hydrochloric acid, it's still a strong acid, but it's not too corrosive. TK, by strong acid, I mean, it'll just ionize completely. Quite literally the definition of a strong acid and a weak acid is just outright asked in the exam. So you just say, if it's strong, it ionizes completely. And if it is a weak acid, you say it's partially ionizes. Okay. And the same thing is true for a strong strong alkali and a weak alkali. And we haven't really taken a closer look at what an alkali is, but we will in a bit. Okay. Uh, but it ionizes completely. Let's change the color completely. And this will ionize partially. TK. Okay. Any questions so far? The poster child for a strong, uh, a weak acid, like most acids you know are already strong anyway. Any acid you can think of. The weak acid, the very good example is ethanoic acid or any carbon, you know, organic acid. Okay, before we talk about what a weak alkali is, let's just talk about what an alkali is. So acid is a, something, an acid is just something that produces H plus ions uh, when, it, when it ionizes or ions when it dissolves in water. Dissolves in water. Chicken, whereas, 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 I need like a very uranium green color, alkali. And alkali produces, same, exact same thing, produces, instead of an H plus, produces an OH negative ion when it dissolves in water. So a good example for an acid is HCl when it dissolves in water, it turns into H plus and chlorine minus as a good example for an alkali is an NOH, but when it dissolves in water, it forms any ions, which are, you know, doesn't really matter. But the focus is OH minus ions. Tegan, any questions so far? An alkali 
It's just what is called. It, it's just something that produces four joints. And the active ingredient for an acid, you know, is the H plus ion. H plus, sorry, acid key, the properties you know of are because of the H plus ion, because H plus ion is very reactive. It'll touch anything, it'll react, it'll dissolve, it'll react with metals. So, so what yeah. if something doesn't dissolve in water? Something that doesn't dissolve in water might can still react with an acid, like metals. If you put it in water, it will dissolve. You will see that. Yeah. Does this make sense? NaOH? Yeah. Let me give you more examples. Like, not much to get, I guess. Like, I'm just telling you guys, this is what a base is. Again, bases have pHs from, not really starting from seven, seven and above. Their pH is greater than seven, where acids will have their pH lesser than seven. And water exactly is seven. Okay. Let's see what happens when, a, when an acid reacts with a base. All acids will react with alkalis or base. Alkali and base are interchangeable words for now. Again, any acid can react with any base or any alkali to form a salt and water. Let's see an example in action. Hydrochloric acid from the previous page, we have this reacting, can react with NaO to form NaCl, sodium chloride, and water. What's actually happening is Oh. Yeah, it's fine. No problem. I just, I don't want other people getting distracted. So hydrochloric acid is just H plus ions and chlorine minus ions when it's dissolved in water, right? And NaOH ions are just NaOH when it's dissolved in water turns into OH minus and Na minus, oh, Na plus, sorry. And these further react, it's a good color right now. Hmm. I don't like blue. Okay, red, no, that doesn't. Hmm. Purple. These react further. To, so the H plus ion and the OH minus ion produce water, right? OH plus H gives you water. And over here, this will give you NaCl aqueous. Now bear in mind, they haven't done anything yet because they're still aqueous. That means NaCl is still uh, there. You know, like it's still ionized in the water. So as soon as the water dries up, you'll be left with just NaCl or table salt. So when you take hydrochloric acid and NaOH and mix it together, as long as they're in equal proportion, moles wise, you'll just make salt water. Namakalapani, you can drink it if you want to. Like blood pressure high you know, as salt. But yeah. This particular kind of reaction has a very specific name and you've heard it many a times. And I kept saying, baad mein karenge, baad mein karenge. this is called a neutralization reaction. Very famous. Because acids really want to react and because alkalis really want to react, they're very reactive. These react on their own without any outside influence of heat or anything. And they're generally, because how reactive they are, these are generally, probably all of them are extremely exothermic. 
at least a bit exothermic, not extremely, extremely exothermic. The stronger the acid, the more exothermic it'll be because the more vigorously it'll react, giving out more energy and Tegan, any questions for this so far? Any questions? Am I going too fast? I have a feeling I am, but I gotta save some time. Tegan, straightforward so far? Do you guys understand neutralization reactions? Let me give everyone a quick question. What is the product when when hydrochloric acid, let's keep it simple, reacts with magnesium hydroxide? What is the problem? Magnesium chloride. And? And water. Yes. So you end up making magnesium chloride and water. Okay, again, but there's this equation you still needs a balancing because magnesium has a two plus charge, remember? And though OH ions they happen. So you need twice, them, twice as many H plus ions. If you try to balance it, you realize you put a two here and I think it's balanced now. Maybe two here as well. Yeah, that's fine now. Taken. How you should see this reaction is remember the word spectator ion? Yeah, but chlorine or magnesium could be negative. Because it's still aqueous, right? So all the ions in magnesium or chlorine could cause spark. They're not really joining or separating right now. Only when you dry up the solution will it uh, result in magnesium chloride dissolved. What's really going on is just everything that's going on is just the H plus reacting with the OH ions over here, two from each molecule to form two moles of H2O. This is also known as the ionic equation for neutralization because this is really what's happening. Because yes, I mean HCl, but they're actually H plus and Cl minus ions. They're aqueous, meaning they're already ions. So I can make it more complicated and call them ions to begin with, but it just makes it complicated for no reason. Anything aqueous is, and if it's ionic, is more or less an ion anyway. Chicken. And you form magnesium chloride and what? Let's do one more. Try balancing it out on your own, people. Let's have, uh, give me the correct equation. Please write it down. And try solving it. You know, has sulfuric acid reacting with sodium hydroxide. What's going to be the product? Sodium A. Huh? Sodium sulfate plus water. Yes. And if you balance it out, you realize it's Na2SO4 with H2O. You'll probably need twice as many NaOH ions. Chicken. And you need twice as many because yape, though hydrogen ions, each acid ka molecule there. So yape, you need twice as many. Uh, yeah, that. sodium hydroxides to uh, neutralize it. Okay, again, one more time. This is called a neutralization reaction. The product is water and a salt. So now Emmett's been like, like a library of like really high quality questions, I think. And he asked, so what really is a salt? Salt is literally defined by this reaction. It's the product that, that is formed aside from water when an acid and alkali react. That's what a salt is. See again. They're ionic compounds. Yes. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. Hmm. This. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, I think my notes seem a little bit uh, anemic in content. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Hmm. All right. Take any questions so far? Acid alkalis? Any confusions? Shall I move on? Okay. Straightforward to people. Take Am I going too slow? No. Is that the case? All right, some acid reactions. Acid reactions. One acid reaction is with metals. An acid. Let's start with the metal. A metal <clears throat> will always react with an acid. More, you know, like there's very few metals that might not react if they do not react. I think all of them do. All right, metal, if I ever you see it with an acid, will definitely react and will form a salt and hydrogen gas. Now, people normally Forget this part, and because of the previous equation, they say, oh, it's gonna produce H2O. No, it produces hydrogen gas, because metal, when I say metal, it doesn't have the OH group next to it. So it's, it's not neutralization. A metal reacts with an acid to form salt and water. Let's see this in action. The metal in question right now is magnesium. Could be any metal right now. You can use any metal. You can use iron, copper, or whatever. We'll react with sulfuric acid. Now, one thing to note is the state symbols over here. Magnesium is a solid, it's metal. And sulfuric acid is aqueous. And they make magnesium sulfate, the salt. Pretty obvious how that salt is made, right? And hydrogen gas. Welcome, Ms. Bushra. Bushra, you are cutting when you are a head girl. Bang, you know, like you don't attend my classes. My donuts have been vacant, like you know, pending. Also, my donuts, like I should also give out donuts as well. But yeah, I've barely seen you. Oh well. Okay, does this make sense to people? Every time you add a metal. To an acid, it will react to form a salt and hydrogen gas. Do you guys know the test for hydrogen gas? When it reacts with oxygen, it gives a light spark. No, yeah, violent yeah. spark. Yeah, yeah, close, close. It does react with oxygen. So if if ever ever you want to test for hydrogen, like quick reaction, say, you know, hydrogen gas, like a reaction. Let's say this, this is my test tube or you have a reaction or that. Exactly this one, how I've drawn it, right? And gas is coming out. How do I test, make sure, you know, for your cheese, do you have gas produced with the same acid, right? I want to make sure it's hydrogen that's coming out. So how do I do that? I take a, uh, yeah, both them. A matchstick, right? It's burning. Then I let it go out. While it's like the splint is like red hot, the black part is like red hot, it's glowing. I take that, that glowing splint into the thing, it'll make a pop noise because that gas explodes, but it's in so small a quantity that explosion is very tiny and it makes a pop noise. 
So the test for hydrogen, let me just add it here. We'll do this in detail after possibly this chapter is test for hydrogen, hydrogen gas becomes pop noise when a glowing splint is introduced. Okay. Now, if you wanna, if you have something, huh? When a glowing. Say that again. What is written after glowing? Glowing is introduced. When a glowing. Sorry. There's nothing after glowing because I skipped it. When a glowing splint is introduced. A splint is a piece of wood, like a stick. You know, just a tili you know, splint is tili. Tiga. Sorry, forgot to write that down. Okay. Now this is also a test. This entire process can turn into a test for metals. Now metal, so I look at it, it's shiny, it's metallic. Hmm. You know, you're like, ah, oh, that's definitely a metal. But normally you don't see metal like that. Metal could be aqueous, kissy cheese metal dissolve. It could be, have a lot of byproducts with it. It could be a compound form, you know, like different complicated things. Okay, let's not bring in the compound one. That's a different case. But it could be very powdery and like mixed with sand and dirt and whatever. As long as it's pure, how do I know? Because metal, ka jo powdered metal, it doesn't look like metal at all because it, you know, looks weird. Maybe it's slightly rusted, so it doesn't, I have no idea if it's metal or not, right? So how do I test if it's a metal or not? So what I do is I drop the metal in some known acid, which I took from my lab, right? Hydrochloric acid, which we tell you whatever I want, some acid, and I throw the reaction in, gases will come out or a gas will come out. And if I bring it, bring a glowing splint to it, you know, like, and if that comes, definitely hydrogen was there. And if hydrogen was there, that means definitely there was a metal reacting with the acid that you brought. Does that make sense? Yeah? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. This reaction is also a test for metals. So if you ever wanna confirm the presence of a metal, this reaction is what you do. You're testing for the hydrogen gas that, that is given off when a metal reacts with an acid. And if hydrogen is present, for sure a metal was present. That's why hydrogen gas came out. Okay. Here's our second reaction. <clears throat> All right, carbonates. You guys know what a carbonate is? Uh, carbon or oxygen. Yeah, the carbonate ion ka koi bhi product of na, like calcium carbonate. Right? So carbonates react specifically with acids. To form Salt, a salt, some water, and carbon dioxide. Okay. And the example for this is calcium carbonate can react with, let's go with what acid should we go for? Let's go for hydrochloric acid. And it'll react to form calcium chloride plus H2O plus CO2. 
Now some people might be confused. Yeah, हमें कैसे पता है ये salt बनेगा ये ये बनेगा ये ये बनेगा you know like that thing. Your indication how my thought process is कि आप product बनेगा. Oh, like in my head when I see maybe I don't see this. If someone's asking by calcium carbonate है and it's reacting with an acid. ठीक है. My thought so process plus, should plus two yeah. is there ना. Plus two किधर? रूल में The rule is that any carbonate will react with acids to form carbon dioxide, water, and a salt. So, its salt can be made. Its salt can be made from one thing: calcium chloride and some H2O and some carbon dioxide. At this point, after this, you try to balance it out, which I obviously forgot to do, and you realize you just need to add a two here. And at this point, more or less, this equation is balanced. Another thing you can do is add state symbols to this equation. But I'll add it over here. State symbols for this are calcium carbonate is a solid. Hydrochloric acid is aqueous. Otherwise, it's a gas if it's not aqueous. This is aqueous. Sorry, dalna zaruri hota hai kya? Ha? Ah, ye symbol dalna zaruri hota hai. Solid. I think we'll start using that a lot more now. So, zaruri nahi hota depending. They'll ask specifically with state symbols. Ya. For any equation that's more than one mark, I think that other mark, ninety-five percent of the time, will go for you know state symbols, unless it's a very hard equation to balance. Okay, but more or less over. And car calcium carbonate, how do I know it's a solid? Do you guys do you guys know what calcium carbonate is in real life? Chalk. Yeah, limestone. Or chalk, or you know, it's the same thing. Different ratios, and different concentrations. It's different things. Let me make sure calcium carbonate is limestone is marble is calcium carbonate. Slightly different. Three percent range. Well, with that, it's more crystallized. Yeah, limestone is calcium carbonate. Yeah, chalk. ठीक है. Hydrochloric acid, you know it's an acid. Very bad. So I know it's a solid, right? You know they made, they used to make buildings and statues out of limestone. Because it's easy to kind of you know turn into easier than other things. Did you guys know that limestone said buildings were nothing, statues? especially purani zamane mein 18th sadi mein na like i think uh, taj mahal it's all marble made na so it's all calcium carbonate and the big problem with calcium carbonate is when you're making buildings out of it is acid rain if you have a bit of like pollution ki wajah se acid rain hoti hai it's just rain with tiny bits of acid in it even though it's tiny it's enough to cause damage सब बिल्डिंग्स के ऊपर वो बारिश हो रही होती है एंड स्टार्ट्स टू डिसॉल्व इन द थिंग एक बार में कुछ नहीं होता बट 10 से 10 साल 20 बीस साल के बाद दैट बिल्डिंग स्टार्ट्स टू डिसॉल्व इन लाइक उसका पूरा सरफेस बाहर की लेयर खराब हो जाती है ऐसे नहीं गिर जाएगी और खत्म हो जाएगी बिफोर दैट इट विल लुक वे अगलीयर बट ऑल दैट डिटेल एंड एवरीथिंग इट जस्ट लुक्स स्टार्ट्स लुकिंग रियली बैड सो दे स्टार्ट मेकिंग बिल्डिंग्स दैट हैव कैल्शियम कार्बन फॉर वन थिंग एंड दैट्स व्हाई दे डोंट लाइक factories near cities because they cause acid rain and they start dissolving uh buildings this particular example is part of the syllabus so acid rain destroys statues and buildings which are made of limestone ठीक है 
So how many reactions of acids did we do right now? What do you guys think? How many did we do? Is Ira not here today? Oh, okay. Now Hayden, I have a question. Maybe you can try answering it in the chat if you can talk. Uh, is this a redox reaction? What do you think? If your memory serves you. There was like six people in this right now. Question. My question is, is this a redox reaction? What do you guys think? No, you see me. Yeah, because the so oxidation- two minus or that, no? Yeah, two minus or that. So oxidation numbers aren't changing for any of these. It's positive, it's minus. Yeah, maybe they're ionic, you know, like, unka to change in your uh, two plus minus one minus I think about one. I mean, funny, right? And yeah, whatever. Chica, it's not a neutralization reaction. Oh, sorry, it's not a redox reaction, neutralization reactions or any acid base reactions. Chica, chica, chica. Complete these equations, please. H2SO4 reacts with zinc. H2SO4 reacts with Na2CO3, sodium carbonate. These two reactions. So, first one. First one. First one. Exactly. This is a this is a thought process. Yeah, acid is reacting with a what? Zinc is a metal. Metal and acid produces what? Salt and hydrogen. Done. Fair balance correct. my laptop Okay, sulfuric acid will react with zinc to form. Now, zinc oxidation number, that's kind of tricky. 
if I recall, is C. I don't know using cross addition. Why are they asking this question? What is the Is that in two plus or ten? That in two plus. Or is that an SO four vector? Is that in two plus or ten? And H two gas. And if I try to balance it out, it's balanced. Okay, I think first balance me give you. I mean, just first one give you. Let me take a closer look. Sulfuric acid, it's balanced out. It's fine. Cheap. Over here, it's gonna form Na2SO4, and carbon dioxide and water. Okay, get end up its balance. Let's see H2. Yeah, I think it's balanced. Yeah, T. Yeah. Right? How many of you had trouble? It's fine, Mitra. How many of you? Anyone have trouble doing this? Hi, Saad. I just saw you. What's up? Okay. Typical acid reactions, reaction with bases, neutralization, acid and redox reactions. Two again. Okay. All right, I think that's it for today. Let's try doing a few questions if that's okay. Let's try doing a few questions. Acid and bases. Oh my God, it's so hot in here. Oh. Okay, what questions can you do with that? Let's try this question out. The second one is a bit tricky. Yes. Carbonate alkali hote hain. Carbonate alkaline hota hain. No. Not really. Why do you ask? Because they're reacting. You don't see them as alkaline. I think I know where you're coming from. I think you had your tuition teacher talk about alkaline oxides, right? Is that what it is? Hmm. No, we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, no, you don't really see them as name. No. Carbonate, like to be actually, let me, I'm actually curious. They're not, but I want to know why they're not exactly. Because that's a, actually, alkaline neotic because they don't produce the OH ions. Huh? Yeah. So alkali ki definition is, you know, they produce the OH ions and they don't really do that. They react with acids, but they don't produce any OH ions. So they're not alkaline. Chicken. 
Okay, for the first one, what's the answer, people? What do you guys think? A. A. So, then, okay. so, so, sodium chloride, no, 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 acid. Yeah. Okay. What does having low pH? The lowest. Okay. The more acid you have. What is the answer? For a strong Bad acid or for a weak acid? Strong. Strong. ठीक है. Where is my zoom? Zoom वाला भी है. All right, guys. ठीक है. Now ethanoic acid is more for retta thing right now, which is other hot thing, yes, man. Hot thing. Hot thing. Fabulous. Okay. So ethanoic acid is a the poster child for a weak acid. Sodium chloride is just neutral because namak pani, you know. It's also a salt. Salts are neutral because that's what they produce. Okay. Sodium hydrogen carbonate. That could be tricky, but uh, it's a carbonate, right? It won't. Yeah, I don't think this will even do anything. But even if this is doubtful, hydrochloric acid is definitely a strong acid. So for the same concentration, it'll have the lowest pH. I like the second question more. Have you guys done the second question yet? Ashwin, how about you? What do you think is the answer? Any ideas, Ashwin? Or if you don't know. B, no, it's D. Yeah. So, B, alkali, remember, carbonate is just a, you know, carbonate. You have a hydroxide, which is an alkali, because hydroxide, right? And this is just a metal. We did the carbonate ion. Carbonates react with acids. Alkalies react with acids so well. Okay, you have that reaction. You've given that reaction a specific name, neutralization. Metals also react with acids to the point where it's a test for metals. Zinc nitrate is the only one left out. Now it could react, but out of these four options, it's out because you know for sure the other three are certain. Because they're classic examples, they're like all metals react with acids, carbonates react with uh, acids, and yeah, alkalis will obviously react with acids. Any confusion with this question? Okay, let me go back here. Carbonates. Take it. So carbonate generally is just just a white powder if it's in powder form. Any carbonate. So what do you do if you want to test for carbonate? Is you test for carbon dioxide that's given off. Do you guys know the test for carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide. The test for it is you pass it through. limestone not limestone but lime water. lime lime water lime water lime water they never tell you what it is i think it's a solution of calcium hydroxide right i can check right now okay and it, carbon dioxide will react with calcium uh, it's a colorless solution pass it through lime water and it will turn milky why does it turn milky is because the carb ye kya bolta hai carbon dioxide reacts but is bubbled through the solution of calcium hydroxide and it reacts with the cal calcium hydroxide to form precipitates right calcium carbonate ke and chote chote calcium carbonate ke opaque white solids aane shuru ho jata hai and because they're opaque it changes the color of the solution 
व्हाइट सॉल्यूशन होता है बबल हो रहा होता है एकदम से व्हाइट हो जाता है मिल्की व्हाइट हो जाता है ठीक है पास इट थ्रू लाइम वाटर इट विल टर्न मिल्की इट टर्न्स लाइम वाटर मिल्की ठीक है दीस थ्री थिंग्स न्यूट्रलाइजेशन एंड दीस टू रिएक्शंस इतने ज्यादा आएंगे कि यू नो वेल इतने ज्यादा आएंगे यू विल एंड अप मेमोराइजिंग देम लाइक यू आपको आइडेंटिफाई हो जाएगा बट द क्विकर यू रियलाइज हाउ इंपॉर्टेंट दे आर एंड कॉन्शियसली लर्न देम you'll have a easier time theek hai so three reactions we did today acid k okay. neutralization reaction so when they react with the alkali alkali is something that produces oh ions so they have oh ions kind of like over here then acids can also react for metals and they're so the reaction is so you know standard they react with all metals it's actually a test for metals and thirdly carbonates they react so well with carbonates if a gas is given off that turns lime water milky it will act as a test for a carbonate in the uh kya bolta hai solution theek hai any questions so far <clears throat> no sir all right chalo acha there are like only four people here right now so i want to figure out what to do because i'm assuming half the class Eighty percent of the class missed their lecture today, so I'm not sure what to do. Well, I think most people have internet connection, actually. But I get what you're saying, internet issues. But you know, like I can upload the recording, but uh, I just I'm not enjoying the fact that this normally. Low attendance at this time. All right, I think we'll have a quiz every Friday now, like a five-minute quiz every Friday, graded quiz every Friday for whatever we're doing. Okay, I will upload this recording. Uh, yeah, but okay, next Friday and the Friday after that. We'll have non-stop quizzes and till whenever. Okay, is that okay with everyone? Chalo, I'll see you guys then. Uh, from uh, I'll see you guys Monday. All right, guys, take care now. Okay, sir. Love us. Love us. Love us. Love us. Bye bye.